Hey guys, my name is Ben Arthur, this is Ben's Watch Club, and today we'll be comparing two of the best budget minimalist watches. I've previously covered the Timex Fairfield and the Casio LTP Sapphire in previous videos, and liked each of them. I think they generally offer solid value for money. However, following my recent video on the Casio, I've had plenty of you asking me which I prefer. Which of these two do I think is the best? So in this video, I'll be analysing each area of these watches to try and answer that question. And if you like the sound of these watches, I'll have them both linked in the video description. Purchases made through those links help to support the work that I do, so I'm massively appreciated. This one is a bit of a two-sided coin. It really depends what dimension you prefer and what size your wrist is. While both watches aren't particularly thick, the Casio is clearly thinner. At around 7mm in depth, it's just shy of two-thirds the depth of the Timex. This puts it on a par with some of the slimmest watches that money can buy, and works well for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it helps the watch to slip under sleeves more easily. So if you've got a slim-fitting shirt with narrow cuffs, you're not going to have any issues. Also, it tends to sit well on skinny wrists like mine. Proportionally, it looks great from a side-on perspective. The Casio Sapphire only comes in this 40mm model, which is generally a good size for average wrists. However, if you'd like more choice, that's where the Timex comes in. With the Fairfield, you've essentially got two size variants to pick from. There's the standard men's version at 41mm in diameter which is a fraction larger than the Casio, but is still a good average size, I'd say. But they also make this 37mm version, which you'll often find referred to as the unisex model or as a ladies one. These are identical to the men's in every way outside of the size. If you're someone like me with medium to thin wrists, I definitely recommend going for this version instead. It will look much more proportion with your wrist, and nobody will know or care that this is labelled unisex or ladies anyway. As a result, I've been wearing the 37mm version loads more than the 41mm. That being said, both are still thicker than the Casio. It depends what you find important. But as a whole, I like the size of both watches. Overall, the straps that come with each of these watches are both pretty cheap, as you'd expect considering the cost. The leather versions are all made of genuine leather. While either aren't terrible, and I've definitely seen worse on more expensive fashion watch brands, I'd say the Timex straps are slightly better. They feel a little more substantial and come with the quick release tabs, so you can easily and quickly change straps if you feel like it. You'll also find a far greater range of strap options when it comes to buying a Fairfield, including leather and fabric NATOs, different types of bracelets, which you just won't find with the Casio LTP. I particularly like this mesh bracelet option that's available from most retailers. With the Casio, you just don't get that many options, and it also lacks drilled lugs, so the Timex definitely takes this one. Overall, I like the slightly bulbous shape that you get with the Fairfield range. It does give the case some personality. That being said, it is only constructed of plated brass. Aesthetically, it actually looks good quality and feels surprisingly good. It also has a stainless steel back, however, isn't as good as the full stainless steel case that you'll find on the Casio. This watch is slim and solid, and features a high shine finish throughout. This is going to be more durable over time, though I wouldn't say either watch has super high build quality. Nevertheless, they're fairly decent for the price. Casio takes this round. One of the key advantages held by the Casio is the glass. As their name indicates, these have a piece of flat sapphire crystal covering the dial. This is great to see at such a low price point, and is clearly above the Timex in this regard. This provides fantastic scratch protection. Conversely, the Timex houses the more widely seen mineral glass. While this isn't as impressive as the Casio, it's still perfectly fine considering the cost of the watch. If you're able to pick one of these up towards the lower end of its price range, many similar watch brands will even be using acrylic crystal in their watches. So it's certainly not bad. It will provide some limited scratch protection, but won't perform nearly as well as the Casio. So, that takes the win in this category. As you can imagine, for well under £100, both of these watches contain a low-cost quartz movement. The Casio contains a Japanese Miyota movement, whilst the Timex has some form of Timex manufactured movement, likely made in China or another Asian province. 
Unfortunately, the latter brand rarely makes movement information available, so it's difficult to determine exactly how they compare. Realistically, both movements are accurate enough from my experience, though as you can imagine, are very basic. Occasionally, the second hands on these watches don't perfectly hit the second markers, though for the price, it's not unexpected. These aren't going to compare to Swiss quartz movements that are priced way higher than this. There are a couple of things to note with these. The Timex has a rather loud tick which is audible in quiet environments. If you've tried their weekend line before, you'll already be familiar with this. They do make other versions though, like the sub-second variant, which are near silent. The Casio isn't so audible, but does feature a rather short minute hand which some of you picked up on in one of my recent videos. I'm unsure whether this is due to the movement not supporting anything longer, or simply a design decision. If this watch was £300, that would bother me. At this price though, I couldn't care less. Frankly, you can't expect perfection. When in stock, you'll generally be able to pick these watches up for between £35 and £75 in the UK, and similar internationally. Prices are always going to fluctuate based on time and model, but overall, both of these are incredibly affordable for everyone when available. Unfortunately, there seems to be some difficulty in obtaining the Casio LTP at the moment. After the first video I made on this, it seemed to basically sell out everywhere, and now some websites have got these listed as discontinued. I've done a bit of digging with this one, and it's really bizarre. I can't find any reference to this watch anywhere at all on the Casio USA website. It's pretty difficult to get hold of one of these from any third-party sellers over there as well. Yet here in the UK, these are still widely available from a variety of retailers. They're back in stock on Amazon, you just have to click on the alternative retailer section. It's also listed normally on the Casio Europe website as part of their current lineup rather than being in their dedicated discontinued section. So, I'm unsure what to think. Maybe this watch was meant to be European exclusive in the first place, or maybe they're slowly phasing it out for whatever reason. It doesn't help that there is barely any information about this watch to begin with, and it's an example of one of the real frustrations that I have with traditional watch brands. There's no need to create messy confusion like this. That being said, if you get either of these watches for a good price, you're golden. The regular retail price of these is closer to £100, I really don't think you need to be spending that much on these. Both watches offer attractive, minimalist designs which are going to appeal to a lot of people. I found it difficult to determine which is my favourite. Overall, I'd say, looks wise, it's probably the Timex. It's slightly more original with its cylindrical hour markers and hands. I guess it's also more minimal without any sub-second hand. One of my favourite features is also the Indiglo Nightlight. This is my favourite luminescence option and it's really unrivaled at this price. When you have a watch that utilises this, you'll end up using it a lot more than you think. I still really like the look of the LTP. I think it offers a closer aesthetic to that offered by many fashion watch brands at the moment. To some, that's going to be great because you get that fashionable look with better quality for less money. However, I can see how that resemblance might put people off. I think it's less original, but still looks good. Both of these brands have a good amount of horological history and reputation behind them. I'd say in this regard, it's up to you which you prefer. And I'd say the same when it comes to these two watches. I hate not providing a conclusive answer in a video like this. Honestly, I can't really choose between them. There's things I like and dislike about each. However, whichever of these you go for, I doubt you'd be disappointed. I'll have them both linked below if you want to pick one up. I'll say if there was anything that swung it for me, it was maybe receiving the 37mm variant of the Timex. If I had a slightly larger, more average sized wrist, maybe that wouldn't have changed things. Which do you prefer though? Let me know in the comments. If you want to support the work that I do on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link to that in the video description. Subscribe for more watch videos, and I'll see you in the next one.